Welcome to The Secrets of Success. By following the proven techniques of the guests who appear on this series, you'll learn that even successful people run into detours and failures, and how you can apply their success techniques to change your life. You're now listening to the most unique show on radio, the show dedicated to making you a success. Looking for happiness? Well, let's use a GPS with our guest, Marina Shakur Haber. Marina, thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Bill. I'm so happy to be here. Well, I told you I loved your book the minute I picked it up, and your book is entitled The GPS to Happiness. We all want happiness, and if you can help us find it with the help of, uh, as you say, the GPS, uh, we should have a great show. I love the way you started your book. You have a quote uh, right at the beginning, and you say, we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. Can you expound on that? Because it's so true. What I've noticed is that what we're doing is we keep repeating our world history. It's not only in an individual life, but in, uh, in, on the world spectrum. We keep repeating the same thing because we're not changing our thinking. And thought creates everything. The chair you sit on, the chair I sit on, someone has thought of it beforehand. Now, if you want to change the design of the chair, I guess you better start thinking of a different design. We have to rethink our thoughts. We have to become conscious of our thoughts and visualize a better world so that we therefore can create, think better thoughts, higher, more evolved thoughts, thus change the world Change ourselves first, though, because when we think better thoughts, when we change our thinking, our entire life changes. Our words change, our actions change, our emotions change, and that goes out as energy into the world and it affects other people. And as it is with the law of attraction, what goes out comes back, but it also affects everything around us. Therefore, start by rethinking your thoughts. And I love that because it's so true. If we do what we've always done and think the way we've always thought, what makes us think, think anything is going to change? But if we use your book and follow your directions, I, I think we're going to find that happiness that seems to be so elusive to us. Now, another thing you start off with, and again, you put it right out there for us, you say your goal is to empower and I, I noticed that you're not going to make us happy. You're not going to bring happiness. You're, the word empower basically says you're going to give us the route, the, as the GPS would do, that's going to get us to happiness. So how are you going to do that? Well, when we go on a trip, what do you need to know? You need to know where you are. So you need to know who you are and where you are. Where are you in your life? And what I've observed is when people start this journey, something has broken down in their lives. They come to this crashing realization that their lives are not working. They look in the mirror and they don't like what they see. They're unhappy. That's your location. That's where you are right now. This pain is pushing you to find a new journey, a new destination, something to get you away from where you are. Now you need to know where you want to be. That's part of your visions and your uh, future, uh, your ideas about the future. But to do so, you have to start again at the beginning. Who are you? Who are you truly underneath it? Not under all those perceptions that people have or that you have of yourself, but truly underneath it all. This morning, I was in a meeting and this lady had precisely that experience. She woke up one day, perfect life, husband, married, she had, uh, obviously, she kid was going to college, mother just died, so something was changing. She looks in the mirror and she says, I'm not happy with this life. She, she goes for a divorce, goes on a spiritual journey, and finally d d discovers that she really likes women. She was married 24 years. What courage. But that is an awakening process. And through this breakdown, she changed her thoughts about who she is. She changed her entire inner world so that she can break through and come out as the person she truly is. That's an amazing story. I think most of us, if you said what's going to make us happy, we would say a million dollars, a winning lotto ticket, 
uh, maybe finding that right person in life, like your friend did, uh, man or woman or, you know, companion, um, maybe getting the right job. But I took a quote out of your book and you said, happiness is a state of being, not having. So are we looking in the wrong direction? No, we're coming from a wrong point of view. It's not the wrong, in a way, it's the wrong direction because what we're thinking is that when I have that, then I will be happy. When I have a spouse, when I have the house, when I have the success and the million dollars, then I will be happy. Meaning that happiness, number one, is conditional. Number two is an outcome. It is not an outcome. It is the foundation of everything. Why do you get married? to be happy. Why do you look for success in, in a career? Not for the money. That's an outcome. You're looking to feel fulfilled. You look for having done something for other people, who to have brought some meaning to other people's lives. So it is not the, the outcome. It is the being. So that state, the state of being, of being happy is your foundation. All the other things are when they, when I get there and it's always outside of us. That's not where happiness is. It's not outside. It's within us. So when we find it within us, when we make the conscious choice to be happy, we will become happier one step at a time. You know, we have many people, and we've been on now over 33 years, we have many experts who will tell us that if you take the two words, success and happiness, we must be happy in order to be successful. It doesn't happen the other way around, that if you're successful and you're the CEO, now you'll be happy. If you're a miserable person, you're still probably going to be miserable, but you have a little more money or you have a title or a bigger office, but it's not going to get you what you want in life. You say that the first step is to be aware of who you are and what you have become and whose dreams you're living. Can you talk about that a little bit? Because aren't we living out our dreams? Is there someone else involved? Are you really living your own dreams? And I'm asking that you directly, but in general, are we really living our dreams? Is it not often that we live someone else's dream, be it society, be it your parents, be it your spouse? expectations. We expected to walk a particular journey, like coming back to this woman. It's an unbelievable breakthrough for her to break the expectation of society, of her family, of the community, that suddenly she comes out and breaks away from it and says, I am not who you thought I was. I'm not who I thought I was. So we should not be living by other people's perceptions of how we should be living or what we should be doing. How often do you hear that parents tell their children that they should follow in their footsteps, but the kid doesn't want it. It's not what fulfills the kid. So let it be. And as individuals, at some point in our lives, we need to stand tall for ourselves and say, that's not what I want. Often though, we don't, we are not quite clear what we want. So it's easier to follow someone's path and subscription to happiness. Uh, happiness. Th that's a great point because I remember in high school people asking, what do you want to be? And just to have an answer, I would come up with something. At that time, I would say a business person or a lawyer or a teacher. But I really didn't know what I want. And where do we get that from? But from our parents and the people who are closest to us, or maybe a relative who's in a certain field. So we do take on, as you said, the people around us. And if they're a baker or if they're an accountant, chances are we would, I guess, lean toward those fields, or that might be one of our f first choices. You say that uh, half of what we believed is formed in our earliest childhood. Can we overcome those hurdles? Absolutely. Absolutely. What it requires, though, is that we look back. And many people don't want to look back because they fear that something is hidden in the past. They fear the shadow. Yet we have to release the shadows so that we become free of what happened. And then we can also change what happened and make it fit 
our own reality. Don't we change everything? So it is malleable. Change it to what you want it to be. Change your present to what you want it, want it to be. But it is important to look back, assess what happened. What could you have done better? Take responsibility for your things. Forgive for the things that happened and just let go and learn. And in everything that happened in our lives, there is a deep, profound message in it that we need to learn. Myrna, at this point in the show, I'd like to let our audience know that if you're just tuning in, you're listening to The Secrets of Success on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I'm your host, Bill Horan. Our guest today is Marina Shakur Haber. Her book is Your GPS to Happiness. And Marina, we're going to ask you, would you tell us where we can get the book and if there's a website where we can get more information? Right now, it's only on Amazon. And my website is yourgpstohappiness.com. Easy enough to remember. And I'd like to let our audience know, too, if, if you're finding the show interesting or you want to tell someone about it, you can always go to the podcast, and that can be found at nccradio.org. There's no charge for it. You go to nccradio.org. Just look for the show entitled Your GPS to Happiness, and you can play it all over the world any time that's convenient for you, and uh, you can play it as many times as you want. If you find lessons there that are helpful or to you or your children or if they're in school at the present time. Um, Marina, do we, I see so many people today, if something happens it's somebody else's fault. It's the fault of the school, the administration, their boss, society. You know, we there's always somebody else to blame. It's never us. Is that part of the problem? Do we seem to want to find a, somebody or something to blame? When we do that, we're playing the victim card, and no one can succeed in in from a from a victim perspective. So taking responsibility is taking charge of your own life. I heard this great story that this man wrote, uh, an author wrote a couple of books, highly successful, had a few million dollars in his account and gave it away to his uh, financial advisor who advised him poorly and poof, all of the money was gone. That was his wake-up call to take responsibility for his own life and he learned more about finance and it was also the moment though when he started to take charge, became the CEO of his own life, that he decided he ran his life much better, created a far bigger uh, life for himself by writing more books, courses and what have you. But it was taking responsibility for his actions, for his faults, and his life that made him the success that he really always wanted to be. So taking responsibility is a huge aspect, and also that helps us not to be the victim. When we play the victim card, it is poor me, I can't win, oh my poor person that I am, that's not going to help us. It's going to help us far better and serve us better when we say something went wrong, I did something wrong, I'm learning from it, and next time better, and off we go. That also requires forgiving the self and forgiving others. Let go, move on, learn from it, and understand that these things happen for you, not to you. For us is empowering because then we know that we had to go through this to learn something. And I love it that you point out that word victim because it's one of those words like coward. None of us want to be associated with that. If, if we probably had a hot list and thought about it, we don't want to be the victim because that means either we were part of a crime or we uh, were the object of a theft or, or uh, perhaps a physical attack, murder, or something like that, or, or just a great big accident that happened. But if we can control that and do it, and as you say, and you make it very easy in your book, Your GPS to Happiness. In fact, I, I think I told you, I looked at the first few pages and I said, oh, this is a book we have to have on the show because it's perfect for our audience. It's just what we're looking for. You ask us to look at two questions. Who am I and what am I here for? What kind of answers do you get from people when you ask them that? Are they able to respond or do they take a few days or weeks? What a good question. Well, 
someone who has done this and who has read the book or has taken my courses, they are, find it much easier to answer it. But this is a very tough question. Who am I? And it goes back to the Greeks. In, in the Oracle of Delphi, there was the big sign, uh, know thyself. It is one of the most basic things we must do if we want to grow. So know thyself is a very challenging question. What do I want? Why am I here? Those are really fundamental questions and very spiritual. We have to figure out what am I supposed to do? What is my purpose? And it's a tough one. But when we find that answer, our life changes. So I find that very often our life, as I said, it breaks down so that we go and look within us, what fulfills me? What do I want? And you know, I have found that if you're clueless about that, start by saying, what don't I want? What is it that I don't like? Because very often it's the jumping board to its opposite, and that is what I do want. I, I drove in the car with a lady who was looking for the perfect spouse or perfect maid. And all she could say, list the things that she didn't want. I don't want a smoker. I don't want a drinker. I don't want someone who only works. I said, okay, would you like to list maybe a few things that you do want? And that's our subconscious thinking. We think first of the things we don't want, but then we also attract those things. So focus on the things that you do want in your life. If it's challenging, start by what you don't want and take it as a jumping board. I, I think that's a great point. And how fast do you find people do come up with the answer? Is, is it a matter of, you know, on the spot? Like if you said, what's your favorite team or how old are you? Or does it take a week, a month, or maybe longer of really thinking about this? It really depends where the person is in their journey. Some can tell you right away because they have figured it out, and others will have to, have to go through the exercises, which I do uh, give uh, through my book. Uh, there's a workbook attached to it that you can download. So there are exercises that help you to find the things that you like and dislike. So it can take time. Be patient. <laughs> okay, we got that word now. Be patient. <laughs> Marina, do we um, underestimate ourselves uh, just in general, the people you've worked with, and you've come across a lot of people, obviously, in, in teaching this. Do we see ourselves as less than we are, or do we overestimate ourselves and think we're beautiful, the smartest people on earth, etc.? What's your perception of that? We think less of ourselves. It's this, this belief in we are not enough is so deep rooted into our, into our DNA that it starts at an early age that we start a comparing ourselves because we don't feel we are enough. And it goes on until the moment that we consciously realize that A, it's not working and B, that we can turn that around. It took me a long time, I had achieved many, many things, and yet I always thought, I'm not good enough. I just am not as good as the other person. I'm too short. I'm too this. I'm too... Everything negative. Until finally I decided, you know what? That's really not true. And it was a breakthrough moment because what we think, coming back to the beginning of the book, what we think about our world creates our world. So if I think I'm not good enough, no one else can believe that I'm good enough either. I'm emitting that energy of not enough. I love that what you said, what we think, and I'm writing it down right now, actually creates our world. And really how true that is. If we don't think we're good enough to make the police force or to go to graduate school or to attempt to uh, uh, go for a promotion, obviously we're not going to do it. And most of the people around us may say, gee, you, you would make a great nurse or a doctor or an accountant, but we just gave yeah. up. We didn't yeah. make the attempt to do it. So I guess if anything, it's our fault for not taking the final step. Marina, once again, I want our audience to know if you're just tuning in, our guest today is Marina Shakur Haber, H-A-B-E-R. Her book is Your GPS to Happiness. And you're listening to Marina on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. We're going to ask Marina if you'd tell us where we can get the book and if there's a website where we can learn more. Right now, the book is on Amazon. 
and my website is yourgpstohappiness.com. And for those who may not have heard it before, we said that many of our guests have said, and these are the experts in the field, before you can be successful, you have to be happy. It's not that you're going to be successful and then you're going to find happiness. So if you want a place to start, this is a great place, your GPS to happiness. Marina has a lot of great sayings in the book, and each time you read it, you're going to find something else to underline or highlight. And I really do think it's going to change your life. It's worth taking a good look at it and uh, even re-listening to the show. And if you want to do that, just simply go to nccradio.org. Go to the show that says your GPS to happiness. You're going to look for it under secrets of success. There's no charge. You can listen to the podcast as many times as you want. Marina, do we too often take other people's view of ourselves, either a parent who might say, gee, you're not the prettiest or you're never going to be a good athlete or something like that. And you're smiling. So I'm, I'm guessing that's true. Is, is that the case? Absolutely. Absolutely. We have all heard it. Uh, do you think that money is growing on, t- on, on trees? You're just not good enough. You're just not smart enough. And I don't know why parents say that, but sometimes it's, it's obviously good to be a little bit humbled, but it's, it's not good that it breaks us. So there's a very, very fine line to walk there as parents. But in the end, it's really very often what we tell ourselves. I had very good parents, yet I came up with my own lies about myself. And that it's, it's in our DNA. There is something that we feel. We feel a lack and an emptiness within us. And we, we, there's that lack. So we, we compare ourselves, therefore, with others. We try to take from others to make ourselves feel better. And that lack is always there until you decide that you are good enough, that you are powerful enough, that you can be anything you want. But it is, again, you have to choose what you want. So it's it's our thinking that creates um, the way we perceive ourselves. Others contribute to it, but in the end, back to responsibility. We are responsible for our own thoughts, no one else. Marina, you mentioned uh, that feelings of inadequacy are the core of all failures. So if we're sitting here thinking, I'm not good enough, I'm too thin, I'm too tall, I'm too old, it's really us then, right? I mean, the finger comes right back to us. So for our audience, we're giving you an easy door to walk out of. Stop thinking of that. It's not that you're stuck in a bad marriage or that you never got married or you live in the wrong city, etc. It's all up to you. And if you take the advice of Marina in the book, Your GPS to Happiness, you can overcome that or at least get around it and make things much, much, much better as you're hearing from what she has to say. You mentioned that we should start our day with gratitude. Now, we've heard that from several guests, and I think it's a wonderful idea, but explain how that helps us. Well, gratitude changes the way we think about life. When, when you come from a point of being grateful for something, it takes away your anger. It takes away your frustration. It takes your feelings of fear and need away from you. You're grateful. And the more you see that you are grateful for, the things you see that you're grateful for, the more it changes your thinking. It cannot be otherwise. So if you're grateful for the sunshine, it lifts you up. If you are grateful for the bed you slept in, it changes your attitude. It's small things. You don't have to think outside of the box. Oh, I must be grateful for all the... Start small. Good morning. What a beautiful morning. I'm grateful I woke up. We all can do that. It changes the way we think from the first moment we wake up. Be grateful for the troubles you are in. That's a hard one. But guess what? It absolutely shifts your perception of the reality you find yourself in. Isn't that far better than making it more difficult? Burdening it with, ah, what a horrible life. Ah, it's okay. I'll get through this. I will make it. And there you go. I I love that. And I know I personally feel better every time I do that. And I I can be having a bad day and say, wait, 
I'm focusing on one minute thing. I couldn't find a parking place or I need new tires on the car or something relatively minor. There are people who don't have food. There are people in war-torn countries. There are people who unfortunately may have been diagnosed with a disease that either isn't curable or is going to be difficult to cure. So if we take a little time out for gratitude, I, I'm definitely with you on that. There's um, a comment you make in your book that I think people should write down because I've got it here in my notes. Your thoughts are magic or poison. Uh, we create our own potential. I'd like you to talk about that because, again, I think it's so true, but the magic or poison, that's two totally different ends of the world, and I certainly want to be on the magic end, not the poison end. (laughs) Me too. Me too. So if you want to be on the magic, what I suggest you do is start becoming aware of your thoughts because most of the time we have no idea what we think of all day long. When we don't know what we think of all day long, our thoughts run us. When they run us, they are influenced by all the negative stimuli that we find ourselves in. It is a negative world. That does not mean evil. It's just a negatively influenced world. And so there's a lot of negativity coming towards us. If and when I take charge and control of my thinking, I only allow the things that I focus on into my mind. So focus on good things, focus on joy, focus on gratitude, on forgiveness, focus on something that you want to create in your life. And then it changes what you allow in. It all works hand in hand. And therefore, it brings that in and you emit that. It's always the come and go with our thoughts and our being. So allow your your thoughts to be uplifting, powerful. If they're not, Say no. You can say no to your thoughts. Either they run you or you run them. Take take control over them. And when they become bad, ask yourself why they are. Forgive them, let go, and immediately think of something that brings you joy. Take over. I, I think that's wonderful what you're saying. And again, we have the choice whether we want to have a happy life or a miserable life. We can certainly make it a lot, much more happier. And if we follow your advice in the GPS to happiness, and the book is written by our guest, Marina Shakur, S-H-A-K-O-U-R, Haber, H-A-B-E-R. Once again, we're going to ask you for the website and where we can get the book. You can get it on Amazon. And my website is yourgpstohappiness.com. Easy enough to remember. Marina, thank you so much for being with us today. We appreciate your time and your good advice. Thank you, Bill. I would like to let our audience know that you've been listening to The Secrets of Success on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. I'm your host, Bill Horan, asking you to please join us again next week at the same time when we will continue our journey to success.